And here he comes, the and here he comes, the Kiwi boy, Junior Putty, Kiwi Samoa, and this is the main event of the evening. This is the rocky moment for the Pitbull Junior Putty, going up against Lucas Brown, the Big Daddy from Australia, former world champion. The WBC Asia heavyweight silver title strap on the line. This will be 10 three minute rounds if it goes that far. A very partisan crowd here at the Auckland Netball Stadium. And uh, another one of these examples of very much David versus Goliath, Junior Putty. He is a diminutive man, has a lot of hand speed, decent punching power, but very, very good combination punching if he's allowed to tee off. Looking forward to this one, Mike. The Pitbull versus Big Daddy. And you're right, this is a rocky situation. That if he does pull this win off, it's going to be like Sylvester Stallone, Apollo Creed all over again. De the crowd's definitely behind him tonight. This being his hometown, everyone's on their feet. We've got a Kappa Haka group here to as well to do a traditional Māori performance. Junior Putty wearing the Samoan Tapa. Representing Samoa and New Zealand. Make no bones about it too. Those calves are looking similar to David Tua. There'll be a lot of power in that punch, Mike. Oh, he's always been a fire plug of a fighter. He's always had good punching power. Poorly matched earlier on in his career. Not always the best conditioned, but 
as he's gone on. He's strung together a number of wins lately. Picked up several title belts and put himself in a position now to challenge the former heavyweight champion of the world. Lucas Big Daddy Brown, 26 wins, 23 via KO. Well, can't forget his fight against Rodenko. Got off the canvas to come back and knock him out. Interestingly, the poll tonight, over 400 people polled, just 47% felt Lucas Brown was going to take away the victory. 53% of people polled on Facebook favoured Junior Putty now I've got to say there might be a hint of that being just a little bit biased yeah well the, a lot of them were New Zealand fans and perhaps had not looked at the KO ratio or records of, of both fighters anything's going to happen on the night though when you've got heavyweights in the ring well Junior Putty he's won a number of titles recently WPBF Asia Pacific Champion, the UBF Asia Pacific title, the UBF New Zealand title. And look at Big Daddy, look at him, he's embracing this. This is a big cultural experience for him, first time here in New Zealand. It's taken him a while to get over here, but here he is. Oh, he's facing down the challenge. He did a lot of training early on with Tama Tahuna, James Tahuna of UFC fame. He's familiar with Māori culture. Of course, he's more than familiar with the trans-Tasman competition and culture. And he knows he will meet the challenge. Al arousing Haka for the big daddy who barely has blinked in the face of the traditional challenge.
After he's accepted the challenge, he has been welcomed. There with the traditional Hongi. As intimidating as that may have been for Big Daddy, he's also an intimidating character, heavily tattooed, piercing eyes. He's ready for the challenge of what's been laid before him. Well, it's not his first rodeo. This is his second bout in terms of his comeback after the bout with Dillian White in the UK. A bout in which he himself admitted he was not conditioned and ready. He had a lot of time out of the ring after the suspension. And uh, Dillian White is a very hungry, well-prepared fighter. Well, the so body snatcher. Now Lucas Brown on the rebuilding phase as he looks to put himself back in a position to challenge for the heavyweight title. Yeah. 
Lance Revel, New Zealand's top referee. In centre ring, the big daddy, Lucas Brown. Back in the squared circle, his 28th outing. Of his 27 fights so far, 26 victories, 23 knockouts. He's a big punching man, a very big man, intimidating. Had no amateur pedigree. So everything he's learned, he's learned on the hop. Certainly looking in good condition. Looking in the best shape I've actually ever seen him, Mike. And once again, a bit of a David Goliath matchup. Look at the height difference between these two guys. Uh, it was always going to be this way. Junior Putty. If you let him get his hands off, he can be dangerous. The key will be what happens when Lucas Brown lands the right hand. Just a long, looping left hook using the jab. Lucas Brown has deceptively long arms. As mentioned, this isn't his first rodeo. He's been around the world, fought on a number of big fight nights. He's been under a lot of pressure in the past as well. Junior Putty needs to be aware of both the chopping right hand and the right uppercut as he dips down. You see him dipping down there. Brown looking for that right hand over the top, leveraging it. Putty showing he's... Not going to be bullied on the inside. You saw that too, and you saw Brown say, okay, I will start a little being a bit more careful on these grapples. Yeah, landed a little clipping right hand there, Brown. Good footwork for such a big man. Putty needs to find his way on the inside. <laughs> Uppercut caught him on the way. Just cuffing the chin. Not too heavy. Brown moving well. There's levels to this game. And again, Putty, he just has this habit of dipping down to his right. And uh, that can make him vulnerable because he has to come up from that. And he doesn't want to walk into the big right hand of Lucas Brown, which is his best punch. The thing with Putty, too, is one punch from him can change the game. If clipped, Brown will go down. But is Putty going to be able to land that? To be fair, Brown's actually got a very good chin. He took a lot of punishment from Dillian White, who's a solid puncher indeed. And uh, in the end, it was just an accumulation of punches. And let's not forget, Dillian White did stop, or did, um, did beat Anthony Joshua in the amateur day. So, world contender right there. And yeah, it was a hard night in the office for Lucas Brown that night. Well, not only did he beat Anthony Joshua, he beat Joseph Parker just recently. And that was a thrilling bout, albeit with the head clash controversy. Brown just measuring him with that right hand. Just holding back on it at this point. Patti eating the lead hand jab. Brown landing the jab at will. Slapping little handbag there from Junior Putty over the top. The pace of this fight too, or, or round one, is, is relatively normal way for the heavyweights. You know, they're not putting too much on the line, just feeling each other out, getting that range. Well, you can see the size difference between the two. Lucas Brown, he's moving well. He's leading with the jab, he's not putting too much sting on it. Junior Putty, trying to get in there, trying to bridge the gap. When he's had the opportunity to, to loop a little shot over the top in the clinch, he's done so. Hasn't been able to get his hands free. Brown looks very relaxed in the corner. He's doing more talking than his coach. I was thinking the same thing. He had a bit of a frustrated, meh type look on his face. He doesn't look too stressed out at all in the situation. Yeah, I think you'll see the right uppercut coming in this round. Off the jab or off the, the long looping hook. Just uh, putting Putty in the way of the right hand. He's dipping into it. Possibly the looping right hook over the top as well, which has traditionally been a punch that uh, has seen Lucas Brown poleaxe his opponents. If you hadn't guessed, Big Daddy, Lucas Brown, the one in the black shorts with the rival yellow on it. Junior Putty all in black. No socks, Mike Tyson style. 
Getting inside. Short and stature. Brown double under hooks. Showing referee, look, he's holding on to me, not the other way around. I can see if this continues, Brown will get a little bit frustrated. He might want to shoulder bump him off. Brown's original foray into combat sports. There he's looking for the right uppercut there. His original foray into combat sports came via MMA. He was saying that earlier this week that his first fight was uh, in the cage. His first three fights from memory are in the cage. All won by KO. Brown getting back out into centre ring. Just tapped on the ear with a left hook there. And another one that went close. Huge uh, right overhand there from the pit bull. Just missing the mark. Well, pit bull is starting to try and look for shots. Brown. Just pushing him out the way. Yeah, well, he's using some ring craft there, really. Good angles. Brown looking super comfortable against the Pitbull tonight. Doesn't have a great deal of urgency, really. Perhaps a little frustration. Putty needs a reminder that he's not in the scrum. I see a bit of blood uh, there on the head of Big Daddy. And already There's that the uppercut that his corner called for. Again, the corner has seen him dipping in, dipping down to his right-hand side. Lucas Brown trying to time it. So there's already been a head clash as well. Ooh. There was a stiff jab off the right hand of Lucas Brown. So he threw the right hand and then just turned over the jab. Long, with a little bit of his weight behind it, Prince Nazim style. There's the right hand just trying to uncork that. Missed it. Another right there in the in the grapple from Putty. Bit of claret coming from the top of Lucas Brown's head. Nice Brown uppercut. just trying to time the uppercut. He's missed his, missed the first couple, but he's certainly looking for it. That cut on his head is well high. He's there for that right hand if he's just falling in like that, Junior Putty. Big Daddy very light on his feet too. I'm wouldn't say I'm surprised, but I'm liking what I see with the footwork to Big Daddy as well. Very nimble. Well, Brown at this point looks like he's comfortable getting a couple of rounds in. A little bit of Vaseline will go on the cut on top of the head. Not quite sure how that would have occurred. It's a long way for Junior Putty to get up there. I'll be interesting to see too. He's working on the left eyebrow there. I'll be interested to see whether that was called from an accidental head clash or Pretty, from a punch. I guess too with Pitbull being the shorter, that head moving around at times, it could have easily just hit him there on the eyebrow, but I see what you mean too with it being at the top of the head. I'm not quite sure how that cut happened up there. Possibly elbows. Big Daddy looking composed, relatively relaxed, considering there's uh, a couple of straps on the line. Well, he's certainly not a man you want to meet in a dark alley if he's feeling a little grumpy. Now the pit bull trying to get on the inside and work his hands. It's the pace of pit bull too. Look, he's, he's sort of starting off the way him here was starting off in nearly a round, and that's what he's going to need to do if he wants to rack up some more points in this game. Now, you just saw a little bit there, work from the forearm of... Lucas Brown, he's getting frustrated with Putty holding him on the inside, so he's going to start to use his bulk and use a little bit more muscle to get rid of the smaller fighter. And you see forearm control again. Putty trying to capture the hands. The prettiest looking stuff there. But Brown's basically, uh, he's being held on the inside. 
He's waiting for the referee to come in and break it. You're right, he is getting quite frustrated. All he can do is just unload a few pot shots into the ribcage there. And he's getting back out into the centre ring. A little bit of tape has come loose on the left glove of Lucas Brown. There's that uppercut there, bumping him off. Looking for the uppercut. Yep, Lance Revel spotted the tape on the glove. He's starting to find a home too for that uppercut. You know, with the height and reach advantage, he'll throw and either catch it midway and then, and then catch Pat Putty as he's walking in. Well, he's basically trying to catch him as he dips down or throwing the, the long left hook to stop him from popping his head up. And you can see there, that's almost a, an MMA for this <laughs> takedown defence. Another uppercut there. I'd like to see Lucas Brown there. Just when he, when he moves around to his left there, that was the left hook that missed. When he moves around to his right, rather, just uncork the left hook. And that'll set Putty up for the right hand. Once again, you can see Lucas Brown. He's controlling the wrist, controlling the forearms, possibly getting a touch frustrated at this point. Putty, now you can see why the, the head work is happening because uh, Putty won't let him go. He's like a little limpet clutching on. Just missing there with the left. If he can, there's that uppercut, and uh, Lucas Brown just touched him with the uppercut. Now he's using head control. Revel. Putty's throwing off the brake. Lance Revel now going to have a stern warning to him. I think Lucas Brown will get tired of this soon. Wouldn't be surprised me to see him try and close out the show. Put more, put more blood over the face there of, of Brown, but I just think it's from the head. It's not actually from the eyebrow and such. Hey, Lance Revel just got. I think he went to the wrong corner there. I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, there was Just, that. As you said, Mike, he's getting frustrated. He's trying to find a home for that uppercut. Yeah. And a right. Now, Junior Putty's being forced to go on the defensive. Just pushing down now, almost a bit like a, a stuff. It is well, turning into a bit of a grapple match at times, though. A well, clear frustration from Lucas Brown. I think he now probably just wants to get the man out of there. Junior Putty will need to be prepared to mount a bit of a, a defense soon and uh, look to try and catch Lucas Brown. Put on a good show so far. Heading into round number four, this is the WBC Asian heavyweight title is a silver title belt, the famous green belt. Lucas Brown looking for this as an opportunity to reclaim ranking points. Junior Putty, uh, Jack, and the giant killer situation. It certainly is, Mike. There's a massive height difference. The 5'7", five, 5'8", five, status of Pitbull against Big Daddy. There in the red corner. Bit of extra time taken in the corner there. Now let's see if Lucas Brown wants to get his man out of there. He's still looking for that uppercut. Lennox Lewis used to do that very well. Good left hook there from Junior Putty. Big he, that was a right hand that landed. Stepping right into that uppercut again. He's, he's moving so well on his feet and well, certainly sinking it in. Well, it's his, his hand control on the inside, he's actually controlling the clinch quite well. You can see him there using the forearms, fighting to keep his hands free. Just be good to see him. This, uh, Whoa. Nice little angle change again, but the left hook was the option there, not the uppercut. That was good work from Brown, just going to the body with the left hand. Putty again with the head on the inside. Brown just getting frustrated quite clearly there. I don't know why the referee isn't breaking them up. Yeah, that's why he's sort of just trying to throw any sort of shot. Isn't he even looking at the ref at times to say, let's break this up? Brown's missing with that right hand. Pat. 
Putty miss, missing with the, the left hook, but Brown do well to throw the left uppercut off the right hand. Uh, looking for the right uppercut in this case. And that's a way to switch angles. If he doesn't hit one, he'll go the other, and Sydney's starting to land a few and sink those uppercuts into the pit bull. Pit bull holding on tight, Brown. You can see he's trying to land the uppercut. Interesting there from the pit bull. He pulled the head down, hitting and holding. You can see, I don't know if the pit bull's getting frustrated, but sometimes when he does throw those hooks, they are with venom venomous intent. Brown looking for that control, still looking for the right uppercut. Again, see when he's landing that left hook, he's moving off to his right, he's landing the left hook, but I just want to see him drop the right hand off that. Putty once again holding him. Brown trying to get his hands free. Punch to the solar plexus off the right hand. Should be jumping in now too. Well, he's trying to give them the opportunity as they lean against the ropes ringside right above us. He's trying to give them the opportunity to fight out, but when that's not happening, that uppercut's getting very close now. So is the hooking right hand. Putty, Junior Putty, notice he's using his left hand. He's getting it up under the armpit of Lucas Brown, which is preventing him from using the right hand with any authority when they're on the inside. Another sinking uppercut. He's certainly finding a home for those. A a again, it wouldn't hurt him just to dig that into the body. Brown's getting annoyed now. Well, interesting fight so far. Not a fight that Junior Putty is uh, is winning. Lucas Brown is taking most of these rounds pretty comfortably. But he's getting frustrated. Smaller opponent. He's probably been allowed to hold a little bit too long. And saying that, you know, it's not as a, a whitewash affair as some would have thought. Putty not making it easy for Big Daddy at all. We're, we're halfway through this fight. Do you see it going the distance? No, I think uh, Junior Putty will get stopped in five or six. Um, he's getting very close with the right hand and he's getting more frustrated. Both fellas looking relatively warm now as we go into round five. Big Daddy there in the red corner. Junior Pitbull Party there in the blue. We haven't yet seen any really authoritative shots landed by Brown. Much vaunted punching power. He's just missing with these shots. Putty, very hard to track down. He's a smaller fighter. Big Daddy saying, yep, that's all right. Well, that was a decent shot from Junior Putty, but uh, Big Daddy's taken some big shots before. Now, when he digs down there, that Tyson punch that he used to throw, the right rip to the body, then the right uppercut. That could well work for him. Corner there of Putty smashing down on the ring. Calling commands. Oh, exchange of left hooks there. That one did actually catch Brown. He's trying to get his hands free now. And Junior Putty doing his best to spoil on the inside. Going for the double underhooks. Almost looking like he was going to take the back. But uh, forgetting which sport he was in. There was an uppercut then. Not super hard. Ripped to the body from Brown. He's just not been particularly fluent. And that's mostly because Junior Putty is holding on to him like a limpet crab. Left hook there from Putty. And again, Putty's there for the left body ripped. Good right uppercut. Brown's been working on that shot. Yeah, he's just putting his arms up. And he's looking at the referee really closely there. He was showing some real frustration, Lucas Brown. It is turning into a very ugly fight. Brown got the underhook off the left hand, twisting him into the ropes. But he's going to walk into a right hand soon. 
Do you think the frustration... Is now he's starting to come on. For the first time, Brown is landing several shots. Patit trying to sneak in a shot there. Lance Revel. There, yeah, big uppercut for the first time. That's the first one that's really landed. Well, Patti, this is his first sign of adversity. Can he get up? Well, one punch, punching power. Junior Putty, he made a good fist of it while he lasted. But the first decent shot that landed, the heavy shot, the punching power of Lucas Brown, it was the uppercut. He was looking for it from about the second round onwards. Big Daddy has arrived and conquered. Taking away the straps tonight, Mike, from the junior party pitbull. Well, junior putty, he did his best. He made the fight scrappy. He limited Lucas Brown's opportunities to get his hands free. That right hand was getting closer and closer. And uh, as Isaac Savage asked me if I thought it would go the distance, I thought it would be stopped in round five or six. And sure enough, Big Daddy landed the single shot, the right uppercut, and Junior Putty couldn't beat the count. That was a beautiful Nostradamus prediction there, Mike. And hey, what a result for Big Daddy. First trip over to New Zealand, takes away the straps to get back on his path and career of, of another world title shot. Well, he will now be back in the WBC rankings. Certainly not in the top 15 or I doubt in the top 15 but he'll be there or thereabouts lurking looking for an opportunity certainly this won't do his chances any harm of uh, a potential fight with the likes of Joseph Parker of course that's dependent on his fight against Flores in mid-December and I'll be bringing to you that to you on Sky TV what a night that's going to be. In Christchurch. Great undercard on that fight as well. Let's have a look back at tonight's fights. Obviously, Junior Patty stopped with a clean KO in round number five. Hemi Arheel, a six-round unanimous points victory over Conrad Lamb. And a cracking fight, Floyd Masson against Smiley Nervosa. Masson taking away the victory there in four. Oh, no surprises there with the results. It was an uppercut. Landed in the fifth round. Detonated on the chin of Junior Putty. Putty, a brave performance. He tried to get his hands free. He landed a few clean shots in anger. And in the end, it was uh, experience, bulk, and power that made the difference. Well, that brings to an end what has been a very solid professional night of boxing here. The multi-trade promotions main event, Lucas Brown, Junior Putty. Fists of Fury 7 has ended in style. Knockout style. Lucas Brown posing centre ring with the ring thing. Malciossi, tonight's promoter. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching tonight. I've been Lightning Mike Kangove here with Isaac Savage. It's been a superb night. Lucas Big Daddy Brown takes home the WBC Asia Silver Heavyweight strap. Hemi Ahil makes his comeback into the heavyweight ranks with a clear-cut points victory over Conrad Lamb and Floyd Musson looks to be a man to watch in the cruiserweight division. I'm Lightning Mike Angove and until next time, good night from the Glad Rap Channel.